So, here's the letter, 4th of July, 2019. Dear Senator, greetings. If you're holding this letter in your hands, that means that it was not intercepted. That's good. My name is Nisin R. Lopez. I'm a 43-year-old Cuban-American artist based in Miami, Florida. I am contacting you in order to denounce a hideous crime that is being perpetrated against me here in the United States of America. Contract stalking and electronic weapons assaults sponsored by corrupt folks in positions of power. Yes, I am a targeted citizen. I've been experiencing organized harassment sponsored by the authorities since January of 2011. This thing ruined my life. <clears throat> you might be saying to yourself, what exactly is organized uh, harassment, right? Well, this is not easy to explain. You know, one could say that contract stalking is bullying on steroids, covert harassment, organized group stalking, or community-based mobbing is pretty much a form of political repression, extrajudicial punishment. You know, organized stalking is a secret program of the U.S. government designed to destroy targeted individuals emotionally and psychologically through dark neurolinguistic programming and negative aversive stimuli. We're talking here about a multi-layered interagency program. Law enforcement is behind this, the intelligence community is behind this, and contractors are behind this as well. Private security companies mostly employ ex-law enforcement and ex-military. As far as the organized uh, community harassment done to me, every single time I go out into the general public, the unjust systematic harassment is done by a group of people in an organized fashion using unethical means to torment, preoccupy, agitate, intimidate, and terrorize the isolated victim 24-7 no matter where he goes. I'm talking here about acts of provocation, you know street theater, invasion of space, noise campaigns, mimicking, directed conversations, engineered collisions, orchestrated synchronicities, entrapment, etc. <coughs> Obstruction of daily activities based on choice reference patterns. The target is exposed to a stressor outside the range of usual human experience. He is terrorized 365 days a year, 24-7. He is kept in a state of anxiety and hypervigilance until he finally breaks down after years of indescribable psychological abuse. Most victims of this program <coughs> end up homeless in jail or in psychiatric institutions, you know, isolated with no support system, you know, in a state of functional disorientation, broken spirit. So now, who are the agent provocateurs recruited by the authorities that constantly harass a targeted individual in an organized fashion? Well, they are called surveillance role players. They believe they are patriots and heroes serving a noble cause. They come from all types of social backgrounds. These mindless automatons are brainwashed into believing that the target is a really bad person a terrorist, a murderer, or a sex offender, like a rapist or a child molester. These perpetrators, you know, they are enlisted through community programs such as InfraGuard, Citizen Corps, and Neighborhood Watch. We're talking here about a professional character assassination campaign, a clandestine civil, civil military operation. <coughs> The command station for uh, organized talking is the fusion centers. Yes, the fusion centers. The primary fusion center in Florida is the Florida Fusion Center, uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, which is located in Tallahassee. 
and the fusion center that is the closest uh, to me, you know, to my area, is the Holland Security Bureau Southeast Florida Fusion Center, which happens to be the Fred Taylor headquarters for the Miami-Dade Police Department. <coughs> Overall, contract stocking is psychological warfare, you know, a secret, illegal, long-term, unconstitutional surveillance program designed to neutralize outspoken, politically incorrect free thinkers that are designated as enemies of the state, even if they are just innocent, harmless, law-abiding citizens that pose no real threat to anyone. You know, keep in mind that the watch-listed individual is also subjected to directed energy weapons and other forms of prolonged psychological torture. I'm talking about mind control, neural weapons, you know, remote neural monitoring. The human test subject is implanted with highly advanced neural nanotechnology that enables brain to computer interface integration completion. This secret technology of DARPA flavor enables the handlers to link the target's unique brain signature to their supercomputer. These are some of the things that they can do with this technology. This technology enables the handlers to read the target's uh, thoughts verbatim in real time. They can tap into the optical nerve and into the auditory system. They can see what you see and they can hear what you hear. This technology allows the handlers to map out all the target's emotional states, especially negative emotions like sadness, anxiety, fear, anger, etc. They can beam these emotions back into the target anytime. They can even Google your memories. This technology can be used to implant words, phrases, images, and motion pictures into the target's psyche or natural stuff. The idea behind this is to make the target believe that those are his real thoughts when they are not, you know, synthetic telepathy. This technology can be used to control dream cycles and sleep patterns. They can deprive the target of sleep. This technology can be used to control the muscle movement of the target, causing spasms. They can also inflict pain in any part of the body. This technology can be used to sexually manipulate the target. It can make the target feel sexual arousal or it can sort of turn off the target's uh, sexuality altogether. It can also be used to manipulate the hormones of the target, thus lowering and raising estrogen and testosterone levels in women and men respectively. This technology can also be used to eliminate the target with an artificial heart attack that generates no forensic evidence. Really amazing stuff, right? All the experiences of the subject are stored in a supercomputer that predicts behavior based on past choices. I think the ultimate end of this program is to create a digital clone of the target's brain. You know, they basically got control over your thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, etc. Full spectrum dominance, you know? So now, the leader of clandestine operations in the CIA, Elizabeth Kimber, she doesn't know anything about this nasty behavioral modification program. You know, General John W. Raymond, commander of the Air Force Space Command, you know, he doesn't know anything about satellite weaponry and microwave bullets. <laughs> The director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, Robert P. Ashley. He doesn't know anything about neurosynaptic ships and trauma-based mind control. <laughs> the principal deputy director of national intelligence, Susan M. Gordon. She doesn't know that targeted individuals are being forced to lash out. <laughs> 
the Assistant Attorney General of the National Security Division, John Charles Demers, of the Department of Justice. He doesn't know about this, uh, this uh, legalized lawlessness. <laughs> the director of the FBI's Terrorist Screening Center, Charles H. Cable. He doesn't know this horrendous uh, surveillance abuse is taking place. <laughs> The Undersecretary of Homeland Security for Intelligence and Analysis, David J. Blow. He doesn't know anything about this black ops. <laughs> of course they all know this is going on. You know, they got mainstream media on a leash so that they don't spill the beans, you know. The puppet masters be, uh, behind these programs behind this personality, this integration program, because that's what it is, you know, they will do anything, and I mean anything, in order to justify a multi-billion dollar national security, counter-terrorism, corporate military intelligence, police state complex, you know, multi-billion or, or multi-trillion, who knows, you know. Think, for example, about how much money has been invested in projects like the brain research through advancing innovative neurotechnologies. You know, this transhumanism agenda is big business, you know, that's for damn sure.